Republican governor from the great state of South Dakota, Christy Nome. Governor Nome, how are you? I'm doing great, Trey. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. All right, let's right. talk for one second. It seems to me, and I, maybe I'm naive, we've known each other since we came in as freshmen together. It seems to me the media treats Republican governors like you and Ronnie DeSantis different from Gavin Newsom and Andrew Cuomo and others. Am, am I wrong or naive in thinking that? No, you're exactly right. I, I like how you talked about our founders. Uh, because we did have some exceptional presidents in our past. They were flawed men, certainly. They had flaws and made mistakes, but they also led our country through challenging times. And I think what's happened recently is that we've seen the media pick and choose who they want to criticize. Uh, this has certainly been a challenging time for all leaders, uh, and especially governors making decisions for their states and for their people. Uh, but they have not told the truth when it comes to what has happened during COVID-19 in each of our states, what the facts really are, and the holistic approach that many of us took to make sure we were taking care of our people. Now, you made a decision, I think it was way back towards the end of last summer, that you were going to have schools open in South Dakota. I think I have that right. So I'm sure you were criticized at the time. Now you look like a genius. Meanwhile, there are kids who still aren't going to school. They're still doing virtual learning. What, what led you to make that decision against the headwind you were facing? Well, we just consistently focused on what we knew about the virus, uh, the science of it, uh, the fact that our kids needed to be in school to learn. You know, when kids weren't in school, we saw that they were only achieving about 70 percent of normal in reading, only about 50 percent of normal in math that that was going to be detrimental to them long term and their risk to the virus was much lower than it would be for older individuals that had health conditions. So evaluating all of that free of fear, free of emotion, helped us to make the best decision for our kids. And Trey, that's what shocked me the most was how the media would use fear to push an agenda during this pandemic. They used it to control people and that is really what has been a grave disservice to the public. Well, you mentioned uh, leaders of the past. I think if I have my geography correct, uh, some of them are etched in stone in your own beautiful home state of South Dakota, Mount Rushmore. Um, when you think of, of, of leadership, the difference between holding office and being a leader, what do you think of? Well, I think a leader uh, tells the truth. You spoke of that earlier in your monologue. Uh, they're in search of justice and that they know that ultimately the buck stops with them. They take input, they continue to be teachable in every situation. It was one of those things that my parents taught me growing up, was to be a problem solver, but also that I could learn something from every single person that I had an encounter with, uh, even if they were criticizing me, that I should evaluate the information that they gave me and use it to make my decisions. So, you know, those four men that are etched into Mount Rushmore are incredibly important to our history. And we saw a movement to tear them down earlier this year. They needed to be protected. We saw monuments across this country threatened, our history threatened. And it's one of the reasons that I've continued to speak about our Constitution, continued to speak about the founding of this country, because I truly believe it is that foundation that has kept America special for so many years. Give us an update on this uh, on South Dakota, both from, from a health standpoint and also from an economic standpoint. How are you all doing? We're doing good. You know, we've certainly had tragedies. I think everybody can look back on the last year with a lot of grief. We all know somebody we lost that, to this virus that changed our lives forever. But our infections are way down. Uh, we are on the downward slope of this. We're one of the top three states in the nation leading in vaccines. We also have the lowest unemployment rate in the nation. We have the least amount of jobs lost during this pandemic, least amount of hours lost, least amount of wages lost. People are moving to South Dakota in overwhelming numbers. Our real estate market has gone crazy. We're seeing historic revenues come into state government because of sales tax dollars of people doing very well because they've been able to keep their businesses open and provide for their families. And we're moving businesses to South Dakota in overwhelming numbers. I could triple the size of my economic development department and we can't answer the phone for all the people who want to come to South Dakota because they recognize that the government here respects their freedom, uh, that we don't have leaders here that overstep their authority in a time of crisis, and they want that kind of certainty in their lives. Governor, I'll let you go with this question. Um, you are on the ballot in 2022. Um, 
uh, for re-election. Do you think there's any chance that we may see you in South Carolina after 2022, just on a on a friendly visit? Oh, I'll come see you any day, Trey. You're one of my favorites. Well, you're one of mine. I love serving with you. Thank you for the wonderful job you're doing in South Dakota. My best to your family. Thank you for being with us.